you're still in the playoffs? Dude, that is awesome. Congratulations. But what do you do on waivers? You had some players get injured. We're going to tell you on today's episode. Make sure you check it out. It's playoff time, baby. Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to remind you about FootClanGiveaway.com. We are giving away a signed Nick Chubb jersey. It's free to enter. All you got to do is help us out with a couple voting things. Bibbidi bobbidi boom. It'll take you probably 30 seconds and you get a chance to win that signed Nick Chubb jersey. FootClanGiveaway.com. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason back with you. A confusing Tuesday morning. Hmm. Why? Why is that? Well, I'm not sure what I watched last night. Oh, it's I, I'm tr- I can't even find an analogy to quite fit what took place on the field with the Philadelphia Eagles, who won the game, uh, are I, now tied atop the division record-wise. I believe the analogy you were looking for is Jameis Winston. <laughs> <laughs> that that is the entire I, I tweeted out I've never seen someone play so bad and so good in the same game referring to Carson Wentz and everybody was like well what about what about Winston and that's how I feel about the game as a whole it was a terrible game it was not good football it was trash to watch the first three quarters it was kind of exciting it was an overtime victory it's- huge fantasy success out of garbage it's super. It's super confusing. It's like a uh, you spent your whole evening snacking on stale food, and then at the end you're like, "Oh, I'm I'm full," like mostly. But like, that's, I'm most, that's I'm, I had a meal. But did I have a meal? That's Jameis Winston. That's well, what Win- I'm saying. Winston is so is easier for me to see. Is Jameis it, Winston a good quarterback? Yes. Is Jameis Winston a bad quarterback? Yeah. Are you confused about Jameis Winston? But at least Jameis gives us exciting moments. And at least we're talking internally here. It's like, oh, without Mike Evans, Jameis might struggle a little bit. And here you are with Carson Wentz, who doesn't have Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar, fourth most drops in the league. He stinks, but he it's a it's a and Right? It's not an or. It's not Carson Wentz, either he stinks or Doug Peterson stinks or the wide receivers stink. It's like and mm-hmm. and and so it's hard to find the blame because I mean I waved goodbye to you guys on our company Slack channel at halftime because I couldn't take recommending Carson Wentz in this matchup and what was taking place on the field and he ends up with 330 plus passing yards two touchdowns 67 percent completion percentage great game great, great what great happens game wins. Yeah, and that ended up I. Have been trying. I've been spending all morning trying to think about it, but <laughs> like if I want to believe you're at it, like a table with trigonometry well, books out, I'm, like you're just trying to figure that. out what you saw. My no, no, favorite no, part is he's trying to think about it. Okay. He's not thinking about it. He's just, <laughs> just trying to. <laughs> That's right. Like if you were playing against Zach Ertz in the fantasy playoffs, and that dude had done nothing until the final two minutes of the game, then ends up somehow scoring two touchdowns. Like that is one of the worst beats, or on the other side of the ball, one of the the greatest comebacks. Like Zach Ertz is now a, a favorite player and hated player by so many people in fantasy football. He won't even understand what happened to his popularity just being absolutely severed down the middle. And you're 100 percent right. My favorite uh, matchup, and there were. Many of you on social media that were sharing your stories, good and bad. My favorite one that was so shocking was an owner that needed 30 points. Oh, yes. 30 points from Zach Ertz and needed Alshon to score zero. They didn't turn the game on. They knew they had no chance, but we all do this. Right? We rationalize like, okay, I got no chance tonight, but you know, if Zach Ertz put up 30 and Alshon doesn't catch a pass, I win by .5. And that's what happened. 
It's insane. <sighs> That's what happened. And and really, you know, Carson Wentz salvaged a top twelve night. What didn't happen was Alshon Jeffrey uh, did nothing for you. Basically, I guess that is what did happen. And he did nothing for you. He got hurt and destroyed. And now he's having an MRI. Alshon Jeffrey once again injured. And, you know, today's a waiver show. So Jeff, we'll, Jeffrey said he reportedly, quote, felt something pop. Not good. I mean, he's he's done. He's he's done for this year. And this is. Which, I, which I makes we'll Carson wait, we'll Wentz. S- yeah. it, it makes Carson Wentz a little dicey, even though the matchups are still good. It's one of those things where you go, can you trust a guy who has not looked great? Like nobody can watch that game and say Carson just looked great he, it, at the very end. He did what was was necessary. Had a couple of good throws. I mean, he Boston, looked good in the last five minutes. Yeah, I mean, he really Boston did. Boston Scott really helped bail them out. He, I don't know if he got the game ball, but he should have. Yeah, he he was good. He was a little jitterbug out there, reminding me of probably why uh, Sean Payton had him in the backfield for a little while in New Orleans, on and off. All right, congrats to everybody advancing to the Week 15 semifinals. If you had the bye week, welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed your time off, your stress-free situation where you didn't watch Zach Ertz rip people's hearts out. I imagine that regardless of the weather where you live, you were in the pool like Adam Sandler with like a <laughs> drink with an umbrella in it during the bye week. What day is it? And now you're October? back. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can always get an extra episode each and every week at jointhefoot.com, our community what else from last night is worth looking? At? I mean, Darius Slayton. Uh, Darius Slayton is you, you. You can't you can't ignore what just happened. Five for one fifty four and two with Eli Manning. I mean, uh, I was cons- I was concerned about Slayton. What was going to be the rapport with Eli Manning? We've seen Eli make things happen with with Sterling Shepard. Shepard had a a pretty terrible game. He still had seven targets, but four for twenty eight. Darius Slayton came through with two monster plays in the first half, and then I mean the, the Giants' offense completely turtled up and vanished in the second half. They really seemed like they wanted Philadelphia to win the game. But Maybe I mean do, when you throw a when you try to run a flea flicker to go deep, <laughs> that's an aggressive move that didn't work. Sure, but I mean you put up. Did they score in the second half? The no, Gi- no, I, the, I, Gi- I, the Giants scored all their points in the second quarter, and then they did nothing. Golden Tate was a huge disappointment, just one yeah. catch. Saquon Barkley was a huge disappointment. He had uh, on the season three receptions for one total yard, 17 for 66 on the ground. I didn't think he looked particularly bad running the football. I don't no, know if that he's... that stat line shocks me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. He had a lot of cool stiff arms in the game. He and... did. You know, he, he he looks like a good player, but they're just not – the involvement isn't the same as it was last season, and now you're seeing the downside of having a player at the running back position on a bad team. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. It was the second time this year that Darius Slayton had 100 yards receiving and two touchdowns in a single game. Impressive. First time a rookie's done it since 2014 when three players did it. That was uh, Mike Evans, Odell Beckham Jr., and Alan Hearns. He's the wide receiver 19 since week eight. So that's, <laughs> a, that's I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> you look at the second half of the year. He's been decently consistent. I would say he's a very exciting dynasty prospect moving forward as well. I mean, very good season. Yep. Daniel Jones and him already have a rapport, and that'll be the combo for a while there. So, can't disagree. Calvin Ridley out for the season. So, there he goes. Yeah, it, it's wild where it, it's the waiver day. Normally, when at this point in the fantasy playoffs, you have maybe a spot where you're like, ah, maybe there's somebody off the waiver wire who could come in and improve my team. But <laughs> if you saw all the injuries that happened, this is actually a, a a very interesting waiver show, a very important time for you to patch those holes in your teams. I mean, or it, like I've seen people saying, "I had the bye week, but I had I had Ridley, I had Mike Evans, I had Mark Andrews." 
and like now there's like some concern about Lamar Jackson playing on Thursday. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey's gone now too. And Alshon like Darius Geis is out. Rashad Penny's out. I mean, it's this is this is a bad week. I believe crazy. Jameis and Mahomes dealing with injured hands, like you said, Lamar. It it, it is a weird week because there's two thought processes that go through your head now. One, maybe you're replacing an injured player, or maybe you have one spot on your team. Hopefully, you've got the depth in the team, and a lot of you out there aren't in panic mode. But the other side of it is like you have opponents in your semifinal week, and there are players out there that will have opportunities. And do you put them on your bench instead of their bench or instead of their roster? Some yes. of those decisions to be made. And you have to look at your opponent. If yep. they lost a guy or two and they're going to be scrambling for a running back on waivers and you're set, but you can drop a wide receiver and pick up that running back, keep him away, you have to do it. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And defenses. Look at protecting yourself against a really good defensive matchup. Mike Evans out for the rest of the season. Rashad Penny out for the rest of the uh, season. That, Mike Evans is expected. That one, that one's not confirmed. I mean, you Bruce to, Arians said I'm he just would be shocked you, if he plays again this season, but he's not on IR yet. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's Jeremy Fowler also reporting that he's expected to miss the rest of the season. Pete Carroll, uh, like I said, Rashad Penny's gone. Uh, Chris Carson is going to – he was already a top – uh, touch guy, but then that was getting infringed upon by Rashad Penny. This week against Carolina. Oh, oh, holy oh, oh, crap. Oh, I hope you have Chris Carson. Yeah. And I hope you're not playing against Chris Carson. Uh, Darius Geis has been ruled out for week 15, an MCL sprain. That That's the best news Darius Geis has ever received. He got that's, an MCL only one sprain. Week. Honestly, he probably, he probably was thrilled to hear that. Probably. If he was going in for an MRI. James Winston is expected to start. He has a hairline fracture. He received a second opinion yesterday to find out whether he could do further damage to the hand if he continued playing. They cleared him to play. He played the second uh, part of the second half with the injury. Uh, that was the part of the afternoon when Ryan Griffin came into the game, and we, you know, people yeah. thought he had gotten benched, and then he came in and dominated what i don't understand is if you're looking for an opinion that says okay well if you play you, you you're not risking further damage how does one have a hairline fracture in their hand and then he goes and plays football and if he hits his hand again how would it not get worse well, i think you always have the uh opportunity to break bones again but i think <laughs> it's just saying, saying like, it's not structurally it's it, it hasn't caused it to where it's going to be more brittle like the art of just just throwing gripping the football stuff like that is not gonna hurt him but uh, you're probably gonna need him this week right Jameis is on pace for the fifth most passing yards in nfl history <laughs> i want do you realize that i did not yeah he, he's on pace for over five thousand uh, yards I which think i think would be fifth or sixth most ever i think Jameis is like the biggest question mark we have him in league one he loses mike evans and a thumb and we wonder can you bench him? Can you move on? Do you have do you to start him? Do you really worry about that? I do I mean, he worry. played the whole game with the fractured hand and no Mike Evans and put up five touchdowns and uh, 450 yards. I'll put it this way. I fully expect us to start Jameis Winston, <laughs> but I worry. But then, have you ever started Jameis Winston and not been full of worry? That is a fair point. That and thumb no. is going to make one extra early INT, Possibly. which probably just yeah. adds two more touchdowns on the back end. Am I right? It is a – well, we, we actually looked at that game because it's Detroit, right? And, yes, and, and my biggest worry in that game is can Detroit do anything to keep up? But I believe Jameis can do what it takes to keep up. To get, keep Detroit to in keep, the game? Keep, to keep Detroit in the game. Paris Campbell just returned last, uh, last week. He's on injured reserve now mm. with a foot injury. Lost season for Paris Campbell as a yep. rookie. And uh, I I have question marks about him and Dynasty moving forward based on the fact that, you know, what this team's DNA is with Frank Reich and with the running game and with Jacoby Brissett. There are rookies like Darius Slayton that I like a lot more moving forward. And, we, and we've seen um, in the past higher drafted rookie wide receivers who m pretty much missed their first season due to injury. And I can't think of an example where well, they just – they got back up on the horse and, and were what they were drafted to be. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, news and notes as always. Well, the, the big news also, Lamar Jackson 
is dealing with a quad injury. He was limited in the Ravens' walkthrough on Monday for their, and they are playing Thursday. I at look at this point, we expect Lamar Jackson to be playing football on Thursday, but you need to be paying attention. You need to have a backup option and not just put your head in the sand and, and hope everything's okay. I, it's going to be very interesting what Baltimore needs to do with Lamar Jackson. The Patriots just lost. Instead of you know winning that game at home against Kansas City, you look at that one seed and the risk that they're willing to take. It will be and They can win the game with Robert Griffin. That's what I was going to say. They're playing the Jets. Yeah. Do, do they need Lamar to win this game, or is it better for their long-term future to say, we'll risk – We'll risk this matchup with Robert Griffin. It is better for no fantasy player's long-term future to bench <laughs> Lamar Jackson. Their long-term futures will be devastated. But you are right. That is the headline story that was highlighted in yellow and that I somehow uh, buried. We got it. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's talk waivers. Put me in, coach. All right, I think one of the more interesting situations out there, a wide receiver, is, well, we know DJ Chark is not doing well. We know that Jacksonville plays Oakland. Mm -hmm. And we look at your sweetie Didi, but we also look at Chris Conley, and we say, what player has an opportunity to be that surprise flex play for fantasy owners this week? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, uh, you were hoping that Chark was going to have the resurgence with Minshew, with him out of the way and a great matchup against Oakland, you got to say, who do you want out of these two guys? The big deep threat in Conley, which is what murders the Raiders. Also, he had more snaps, was on the field more than D.D. Westbrook this last week, or D.D. Westbrook, the better wide receiver all around, more of a possession guy if you're in a PPR. I lean the D.D. Westbrook side. I think he's mm. going to be a really good start here he might not have the upside. I, you know, I think they both have about the same upside. I just, I, I think Didi's floor is higher than Chris Conley, who can just disappear. Yeah, Con Conley could put up two for twenty-eight, and you know, Didi was more productive last week. Once Shark left, too, Didi had a pretty okay week compared to Conley. I think Conley only had one pass catch. I think both players. You know, I put it 60-40 that DD has the better week, so maybe you're gambling a little too much trying to start either of those players. I really wanted to make Minshew my stream of the week in this matchup. It was just such a sh I, I don't think you can lose DJ Chark and then bank in the playoffs on the mustache. Even with Keelan Cole there waiting in the wings? <sighs> I've seen a lot of targets to Keelan Cole that seem like they were – like Cole did the wrong thing. <laughs> Over the last couple of weeks – Whatever target has gone to Keelan Cole, Keelan Cole looks lost. A.J. Brown, probably the main waiver wire pickup at the wide receiver position because of the matchup. Houston, at home, A.J. Brown, right now he's 26% owned according to the numbers that we have. Last week, two monster touchdowns. Uh, this, is, this is a player that is a potential week winner if he hits. Yeah, he's he's been an absolute beast. He his efficiency metrics are off the charts. He he's he's the best most efficient wide receiver in football when it comes to a per target basis and that's not just rookies. He's been unbelievable. Ryan Tannehill's been great. And how do you do anything against the Tennessee Titans other than try to stop Derrick Henry? And then if you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage against AJ Brown, good luck tackling him. Tackle a tank. Go ahead, try it. There's, or let's be more realistic. A car. Go out. You just downgraded him from a tank to a car. Well, I'm downgrading uh, Cybertruck. I'm 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 downgrading <laughs> the NFL defensive uh, player to ourselves, to me mere mortals, to, ah, to okay. humans. It would be like me trying to go tackle, let's say, uh, an electric one of those little smart cars. I still think you could not do it. I know I could not do it. <laughs> and that's my point. Because it's a car. Yes, and that's what, I mean, A.J. Brown out there in single coverage, you're not tackling him right off I, the bat. I, ju I think I just liked it when you said try to tackle a tank. Yeah. I think that was more entertaining. And more entertaining, but less accurate. And we're about accuracy here. N number five rank on the week, Mike over here. Oh, killing thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, A.J. Yeah. Brown, highest 
yards per target for a rookie with 60 plus targets since 2000. I love this guy coming out. I didn't think he'd have an opportunity to catch enough passes in Tennessee until and they decided Ryan Tannehill. So he did not, and now he does. Now he does. Anthony Miller has uh, put a number of good games together in a row. They have Green Bay and Green Bay. Eh, I don't know if I want to do that dance. Uh, no, thank you. Zach uh, Paschal. Hmm. Zach Paschal is known as the last man standing. Uh, each and every week, they lose somebody. Chester Rogers. Now Paris Campbell's gone for the year. No T.Y. Hilton. Zach Paschal is a very it's really comfor comfortable start. Yeah, it's it's tough because you've got the Saints who give up plenty of fantasy points to wide receivers, but Marshawn Lattimore has been a really solid you know, cover against the one, they're really giving it up more to the wide receiver two. Now, usually that's Pascal or Pascal's the three or eight, whatever. But uh, right now, with Zach Pascal being the one, if he does get Lattimore as the primary coverage, I worry more about him this week than I did last week. Because I you, just don't think he's, you know, has Lattimore been beat this year? Sure, there's been some, but I don't think Zach Pascal's the guy beating Lattimore. Yeah, I, I, but I don't think Lattimore's going to, it's going to be all over Pascal all game long. Debo Samuel and Emmanuel Sanders had their way with this team last year, and the Saints should be winning. So, I mean, just garbage time alone could be an opportunity for would, Pascal. Would I love you, that somehow I'm in on him this week more, <laughs> than, more than you are, and you're trying to uh, move away from him. Would you consider Marcus Johnson? I mean, Marcus Johnson's had a couple of decent weeks. That's the That would be the wide receiver two not, here. for Not the more Colts. than Pascal, no. Okay. No, I think that, as much. I mean, nine targets for Zach Pascal. I, I I like that. Hundred percent of snaps on the field. More trusted. So no, I I don't roll Marcus Johnson out there myself, Mike. I imagine you're not making any allusions to that. No. Darius Slayton. We just talked about him. We expect Daniel Jones back. Uh, uh, the last I'm, I had heard, it was possible that it was a multi-week absence yeah, for Daniel Jones. And why I were they talking so much about that being Eli Manning's last game with the Giants the, I, last I, night? I think what who, you were, who was talking about it? <laughs> yes, that's Andy. what I was going to say. I think Probably what, Booger. <laughs> I think guy, what you were seeing Booger, is... Booger, the guy who was like, let's see if the Philadelphia Eagles bust out one of their RPOs here while there was no running back in the backfield. <laughs> It's hard to do a run pass option. The narrative of it being Eli <laughs> oh, Manning's last bugger. game was too much for yeah, him to handle. Never, if I was on Monday night, that's what I would be talking about too. Yeah, I, I do expect Eli Manning to be playing this week. They have Miami. I mean, Slayton is a is a must play then against Miami at home. Eli Manning willing to throw the ball deep. I would rather not a lot on the line for them. I would rather play Darius Slayton than Zach Pascal this week. Mm. Would you? As well, or would you? Are you still on the? No, I, I'd rather play Slayton than Pascal. Yeah, yep. I think he's just a better receiver. Mike, where do you side? I I side with Slayton as well. And just so you can hear the opportunity that Slayton has had recently, fourteen targets, seven, nine, eight. So he's he's involved in the offense. This is not just a he hit. Uh, he hit two big plays on three targets. He's he's involved. His his target share is safe. How about, let me bring up this name. Did you run out of air there for a I second? Did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Thought, I thought I caught a little bit of you running out of air at the end of that sentence. Breathing is hard. <laughs> and I like him very much, and I like him. <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw a name out there that I think is a legitimately decent start this week, but you're not going to feel great about it. Alan Hearns. Alan, Her it, it, this is this is in the world where Devontae Parker is still in the concussion okay. protocol. All right, you've lost Preston Williams, you've lost Devontae Parker. This is against the New York Giants. I mean, Alan Hearns has to do something, right? Last week, eight targets, five yep. for sixty-eight. I would prefer to play Brashad Perryman over Alan oh, Hearns this week. That one hurt. That's rude. <laughs> How rude is it, Jason? <laughs> you want to go Alan Hearns versus Brashad Perryman in the greatest bet? <laughs> Put it on the boat. Water bet. Look, Perryman has Detroit, and last week he had he was three for seventy and a touchdown. You no, got, Mike Evans. You got the wrong Tampa receiver. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, baby, Justin Watson, superstar. Wide stop! Receiver. No, stop it! Stop it! He's. F you don't get to say no after you call him a superstar. Well, just wait. Just you wait. 
Justin Watson. I can't Watson, tell what you're saying is what's real or fake. Okay. You called him a superstar. Well, I, I this, so obviously that's exaggerated. This is a guy who uh, his, could not get on the field until Mike Evans got hurt. Right. Pl played well, less snaps than Brashad Perryman? Yes. Isn't going to play ahead of Mike Evans, Mike. You're right. He was. But Brashad, I'm saying Brashad Perryman has been playing all year. Well, he's a veteran. I mean, you, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying, here's what I'm saying. You'd rather play, you, you're a head coach. You're like, well, Brashad Perryman, you're you're the veteran. I have Justin Watson. He's superstar. A super, he's a superstar. But look, I'm sorry, Justin. I there's need, a veteran on this team. I need a if Justin, only you were a veteran. A Justin Watson, <laughs> Brashad Perryman bet. You want uh, that one too, Mike? You want in on this yes, one? Yes, I will take that. Yeah, one. me too. Not a problem. Water bet. B before uh, before this past week, uh, one catch on the air. For, yeah, for his, superstar his Justin snap Watson. Count, his snap counts were one, two, one, two, one, three. Exactly. He couldn't That's get the on point. the field. He was playing behind Mike Evans in a very set wide receiver core. Then Evans goes out. He gets 43 snaps. He's eight Why are we talking targets, about five Justin for Watson. 59 and a Th touchdown. There's no point, literally no point in talking. Before you started talking about Alan Hearns, who we also don't really need to talk about, I was going to say we really shouldn't linger on any of these guys. The Perrymans, Hearns, Gage, Conleys, Watsons. None of those guys are going to have significant value, and none of them are going to – you want your opponent playing them, most likely, compared to whatever options they had previously. So I think it's just – All right, so – Go spend up, get A.J. Let, Brown, and then play So, him. yeah, let's, let's condense this here. Who are your top three favorite wa uh, waiver wire wide receivers? A.J. Brown, Darius Slate, and Zach Pascal. Those I, are my three. I would say A.J. Brown, D.D. Westbrook, and and Darius Slayton. And I would say A.J. Brown is number one. So that there, that makes it pretty easy I for I would people. spend a lot. If he's out there, and yeah, he, at this I, point, I would spend up. I would burn my waiver. Yes. I, I like Slayton, and I'm on the other side for Jason. I like Chris Conley. I thought you were going to say Justin Watson. All right, before <laughs> we get to running backs, want to thank Roman for helping sponsor today's show losing your hair can be devastating i know it. it's happening to me but regardless of when it happens you have an option out there you're no less of a man if you don't have hair you're no less of a man if you're concerned about hair loss look if you want to keep your hair there's roman they make it very easy to treat hair loss without ever leaving your house you can do it on your phone your computer you connect with a u.s licensed physician for a free online evaluation to see which treatment options are right for you and they offer fda approved over-the-counter and prescription options if the do doctor decides medication is right for you roman will deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping go to getromancom slash footballers to start your free online visit if you want to stop or prevent hair loss starting Early with Roman is key. Once again, visit GetRoman.com slash footballers to get started with a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. All right, let's look at the running back position. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit yesterday. He's probably owned by now after four consecutive solid weeks, but Raheem Mostert, Colonel Mustard himself, I have him down as 51% owned. They play Atlanta. Ooh. I think Mostert can be started for Most sure, but he's probably not available. He must start. Sure. He, is, he is absolutely a guy has to be in your lineup and probably not available. Opportunities at running back this week, however, there are many that have them. Adrian Peterson will be alone in the backfield. He will be a volume play. 20 well, carries is guaranteed. Chris but Thompson's still there, right? Uh, I yeah, I I meant it in the context of guys uh, guys okay. being out. Right. Uh, Thought but, I missed something. No, no, but Peterson will have fifteen to twenty carries. Patrick Laird, do you have any interest against the I Giants? Do. I, I mean, do have interest. Look, top twenty two weeks in a row. Patrick Laird, he he's the guy right now for the Miami Dolphins. And if you lost a running back and you got to replace with someone who's going to actually get volume. Patrick Laird will have it, and he has passing game chops, which is the more important thing. So, I mean, like, Adrian Peterson can get you the 22 carries, but 22 carries against Philadelphia turns into 70 yards. I mean, I like Laird more that's than That's fine, but then because of the way that fantasy is scored in most leagues, Patrick Laird comes through with four receptions, and he, he will end up being pe beating Peterson in scoring. So, I, I like Laird more than Peterson. I like this neither. Week. I, I really do. I'm 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 not being you know I'm not being tongue in cheek there. The Giants are not Start Watson at running back. 
the Justin <laughs> the, Watson. The Giants are not that bad against the run. They, they feel like they were terrible. You look at the first half of the season, and they were terrible. Then they made a trade uh, for, was it Leonard Williams from the Jets? And all of a sudden, as soon as that trade happened, the Giants were not a team that you can run on. I, I don't think – Boston Scott says you're wrong. Boston Scott, sure. That was a that was a cra- – I mean, we all saw it coming, right? Including yeah. the Giants, that, that Boston Scott would get all these wing targets. I mean, he had 70 receiving yards. So, sure, you're right in the sense that Laird is it's much more valuable that he can receive the ball than his rushing. I mean, he's not going to do it on the ground. But, I mean – DeAndre Washington, to me, is the clear runaway favorite. And then my second is Ronald Jones. Those two guys, I think, are awesome I would, this week. And I would say, yes, DeAndre Washington would be my clear number one pickup who's actually readily available. Ronald Jones is 63% owned in leagues. Like He's he's probably not available. He might be one of the beneficiaries of no Evans. Yes, and he has the excellent matchup against the Detroit Lions, which is basically – a top three matchup for running backs. You can throw like, Bilal Powell away, by the way. It's over. Sure. Yes. It's done. Did you guys see the New York Post article? Granted, it's the Post. About Lev Bell bowling? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. No. It allegedly Lev I him. have not seen this. So the, the Jets ruled him out, sent him away because he had the flu, which is going around, and we, we know all about this. And he spent Saturday night, allegedly, at a bowling alley till like 1 in the morning. Is, uh, New York Post. I'm just whatever. Okay, moving on from that. But uh, so the point of, of like Patrick Laird versus DeAndre Washington, we don't know for sure that Josh Jacobs is going to miss. Correct. Jo- like Josh Jacobs, you you could be loaded up with DeAndre Washington, ready to go. The matchup is great against Jacksonville at home. I'm all on board DeAndre Washington being a top 24 guy if Josh Jacobs is out. But you might be planning on Washington and then get to Sunday and all of a sudden Josh Jacobs is actually active and you're hosed. The The play of Patrick Laird, it's not a matchup play at all. It's not a talent play. This is, you need volume and Patrick Laird will get 15 or so carries and four to five receptions. That That's all I'm saying for Laird. That's my endorsement. Yeah, I mean, I, the past two weeks, he's been a top 20 running back both weeks. Yeah, I, I totally get it. And and it's, it's similar. You can make the same argument for Adrian Peterson. It's not an efficiency thing. Or a matchup. Yeah, at this point, you're just needing it's volume. Someone, you're just needing someone who's actually going to touch the ball. But I would rather take the shot. I, this is what this is just my opinion, and you guys can play it a different way. If I'm in the playoffs, I believe DeAndre Washington will start this week, and I would rather take the shot at a guy who I think could be a blow up play for my playoffs than say eh, I need a guy. So I'm gonna. I mean, grab both. You know, if you really need one and you have to. Uh, you know, you're you're down a running back or something. I would rather take my shot on DeAndre Washington and and Ronald Jones if if he is out there. He's he's owned in a lot of leagues, but those two guys I think are going to be good starts this week. All right, let's talk about the tight end position. Probably the most relevant one for playoff teams right now because you've kind of gotten here and you might have done it streaming the tight end position if you don't have Zach Ertz who has come on in a big way over the last six weeks, by the way. Yeah. By far the number one tight end over that span. But if you don't have Ertz and you don't have Kittle or Kelsey, you know, maybe you have Mark Andrews and you're not sure his health. Maybe you've been streaming guys week over week. Right now I'm looking at O.J. Howard, right? And and I'm saying I don't care. (laughs) I mean, I do care what you've done during this year. I do. Don't. Well. I'm not forgiving that, O.J., but I am going to give you. A clean slate for this game because OJ just Howard the last two weeks. Sorry to cut you off, but five for sixty one two weeks ago, four for seventy three. So even before the Mike Evans injury, he still had a five for sixty one game, and that with the opportunity for a touchdown that OJ Howard has, like I'll take that. Yeah, definitely. When, when Jason brought up, you know, you might you play it your own way. I don't play streaming tight end to get Jason Witten stats. I play it to have an opportunity to win the position. And that's what O.J. Howard offers you athletically. That's what Noah Fant offers you athletically. Last week, four for 113 and one for Noah Fant. Those are the two players that I want. And then you can look at, you can glance at David Njoku to me. 
Oh, so against the, Arizona, but he he just didn't get on the field a lot. But maybe that was just easing back in. You missed my my number one pickup, who I thought you were going to say glance at is is Ian Thomas from Carolina. Now this is still much like DeAndre Washington is a great play if Jacobs is out. Ian Thomas only works as if Greg Olson misses another game with his concussion. We don't have an update on that yet, but Ian Thomas. He is readily available, and he gets to play the Seattle Seahawks. They've allowed the second most points to the fantasy tight end position. They have just been absolutely getting destroyed the last three weeks. And and Ian Thomas was 5 for 57 and 1. Ten targets. Kyle Allen targets the tight end position. And Ian Thomas, talent, opportunity here if Greg Olson misses. He would be my favorite guy, but once again, we don't know for sure that Greg Olson is going to miss. Well, and, and based on that, then, wouldn't you spend up on Howard and Fant over Thomas? Because the waivers are going through in the morning. you got to make that decision. I don't think that you're losing much. If we knew. I mean, I, I like Howard and Fant more than Thomas anyway. That's where I am as but, well. But I, even if it was close, you can't take a shot on adding Thomas and then losing him for Sunday morning. That's yeah, the problem. This isn't an anti-Ian Thomas take. I think he's going to have targets if Greg Olson is out, but I still don't think his ceiling is the same as O.J. Howard. Uh, O.J. Howard would, would be the guy I would I would target. Howard's my number one. How are you feeling about the Njoku situation after seeing him on the field last week, Jason, knowing that Arizona struggles versus the tight end as well? I, I mean, the reality is... I like Baker this week. I think Baker's going to be fine against the Arizona Cardinals. And if that's true, then David and Joku could end up with a with a decent week. I mean, last week was the first week of the season that the Arizona Cardinals did not get torched by tight end. Uh, and that was against Vance McDonald. And who, that was the, the, the one week we have, have actually said, I don't know if I would play the tight end yeah, against so Arizona. It's tough with Njoku. I mean, a, again... I'm not doing Njoku over O.J. Howard. I think O.J. Howard is getting involved, is talented. There was a reason. You know, it wasn't like fantasy p players and analysts and everybody were just out of their minds to have O.J. Howard as the fourth-ranked tight end going into this year. There were reasons, things we've seen on the field, physical measurables that said he's the guy. Then you come into the season and you realize, okay, they're really doing the two wide receiver thing. The Bruce Arians system that doesn't utilize t tight ends is a big deal. Right, OJ Howard is playing horribly and dropping passes all over the place. Right. And now you fast forward, he's playing well. You lose Mike Evans. I mean, you know, I talk about, okay, uh, Justin Watson or Brashad Perriman, who's going to step up? More than likely, it's probably the best player, which is OJ Howard. Is OJ Howard a superstar? I think the huge on irony, a scale of of Justin Watson. I th no, where he's does no, he measure up? No, he's no Justin Watson. But um, <laughs> I think the huge irony to fantasy football this year is that OJ Howard could be a league winner. <laughs> which well, is, and, and then, he could uh, be the biggest bust that of the is year. Really funny. If well, welcome the, back to the top of draft. Yeah. If if he ends up as the biggest bust and a league winner, because it's not. It's not the person that drafted him. The person that drafted right. him is not picking. They're listening right now, going, "I ain't doing it. <laughs> I ain't. I ain't picking up OJ Howard and rolling that. I. I did everything to get over that loss." Um, well, he, he's not the only one. I mean, you might not have gotten to the playoffs if you trusted in Robbie Anderson or Robert Woods or you know those players, and they might win you your league right now. Right, like those two guys, OJ Howard. They. They're they're shooting for some draft stock in 2020. They want their fantasy football rounds moved forward based on how they're finishing. Um, so if if you're one two three, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Howard. I'm gonna go Fant. I'm gonna go Thomas. I would go Howard Thomas Fant. That's how I would do it as well. And I uh, I will say this: I like Injoku this week more than I liked Vance McDonald against them last week. I agree. So let's move on. Full stream ahead. Ryan Tannehill. That's a good pick, Mike. <laughs> Let, let's have Andy lead off, and then I'll I'll piggyback. Uh, Ryan Tannehill's a great stream this week. He has Houston. Houston's given up quarterback one performances in seven of nine games. That's Matt Ryan, Pat Mahomes, Jacoby Brissett, Derek Carr, Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, and uh, the real capstone here, Drew Locke last week in a quarter basically and these are not just 
like good performances. These are three or more touchdown games. These are dominant performances for fantasy. And really, the uh, Gardner was not in that top uh, QB1 performance against them, but he had 300-plus yards. Yeah. Ryan Tannehill, they're playing for this division. He has weapons. Houston, it's one thing to say, hey, you're going to, you know, like Philly really wants to play defense, but they can't. They Their secondary can't mm-hmm. do it. Houston really wants to play defense. They they really can't. Ryan Tannehill, not very often. Ryan Tannehill has a tank, and that's not fair. <laughs> you know, he gets to throw it to a we're tank. We're back to a tank. Yeah, we're back to. Andy right. pointed out it was it was, it was, it was way better. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up here. So I I was doing all my research this morning, and I found other quarterbacks that are options. I brought up Gardner Minshew. I actually think Eli Manning uh, this week has you know against the Dolphins. I think he's actually a streamer. And Jimmy Garoppolo w- would be a guy who would play over both of those options against Atlanta. Jimmy's been getting it done. You've seen the weapons now emerging. Debo looks so legit, and, uh, you know, obviously George Kittle is amazing, and Emmanuel Sanders has been great. But my, uh, you know, it's playoff time. My my streaming tight end, uh, streaming quarterback of the week is definitely Ryan Tannehill. That's who you need to start. If he is out there and available, he's just been amazing, and so that you know, I'm gonna echo Andy, but yeah, it's it's Ryan play. Tannehill, uh, but we're trying to give you some other options just in case Tannehill isn't there. And my streaming quarterback of the week, it's Baker Mayfield. This is the Mike Wright special too. Mike is never afraid to bring the fire with a player that just underperformed. If the matchup says you should, yes, and uh, much like Jared Goff had his. Uh, where it looked like people were calling for Jared Goff to be benched, and then he played Arizona, and looks like Goff kind of got his groove back after he destroyed them. The matchup is so great. Arizona is on pace to give up nearly 5,000 passing yards and 39 passing touchdowns. That would be the second most achievement unlocked, second most yards allowed of all time, and the third most passing touchdowns allowed of all time if they hit those marks. Baker, like Baker, is good enough to bounce back against this Arizona defense and, and put up some serious fantasy points. Yeah, I mean, everyone is. In no, the NFL. Not not Duck. That's okay. Duck, look, 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 Duck I, was I, too low. And I didn't want to play Vance. I didn't want to play Duck, regardless of the matchup, just because of how that offense works. But Baker, with, with his wide receiver one, Jarvis Landry, and with Njoku actually getting back on the field, and maybe Beckham does something. Here's what I love about the 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 Arizona Cardinals and the, and the Steelers last week is that Duck was bad, and Vance was bad, and Benny Snell was bad, and James Washington was bad, and they just destroyed them. Just destroyed the Cardinals. Yeah, I they mean that's, that not really though. the Cardinals. I mean self- the, the Cardinals had a chance to win the game at the end, but I, I get what you're saying. Part of the recipe for matchups has to be how the team wins the game. And F- Pittsburgh wins their games differently than most yes. most teams in the league. Baker is going to be able to do what he wants against Arizona, so I don't mind that one at all. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, defensive streamers. These are pretty important this week. I'm going to go with Philadelphia's defense against the Washington Redskins. We almost had Dwayne Haskins pulled this past week, and that would be bad for this streaming opportunity. Well, I, I don't know if he was more so going to get pulled. It was banged inju- up. Yeah, it was yeah. injury. But uh, Dwayne Haskins is the king of sacks. He loves them. He needs a few. Every quarter, they and fuel him. Yeah, they fuel to perform mediocrely. <laughs> Is that? Yes. That's, sorry, that was a huge compliment <laughs> and not a word. Philadelphia <laughs> against Washington feels extremely safe. They're one of the matchups I'm going with in a couple of uh, playoff leagues. Yeah, I mean, just look at the rest of the season, and whenever you see Washington there, p- put the defense against them until Case Keenum gets in. For me, I'm going with the Browns against Arizona. We, you know, we just talked about how Arizona, really? I, I am really three weeks in a row, three ga- or the last three games for Arizona, because they had a bye week in there. They have given up a top five DST performance. Wow. Kyler Murray loves taking sacks. If you got, if you got you know, like points for 
sack yardage? Oh, my goodness. Because yeah. he likes 20, 30 yards. He sacks. likes him deep. Um, yeah, look, the little bitty baby boy has been running away, oh, has no. been throwing picks. It's not been good in Arizona. Since their bye, they've had two of their worst games of the season. The vibes are bad, and I think that the Browns defense can get it done. Checking out the, the stream finder tool that we have for supporters at jointhefoot.com. You would see over the last month, Arizona has been the third best matchup for DSTs. The number one matchup is the Carolina Panthers. So I will be taking the Seattle Seahawks as my streaming defense at home. Kyle Allen, he's he has some – he flashes here and there, but he also turns the ball over. I like the Seattle Seahawks this week. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too. This segment brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. Head and shoulders, offense for great hair, defense against flakes. Visit head and shoulders, Walmart sweeps dot com for your chance to win tickets to Super Bowl fifty four. Oh man. You guys want to do a little mailbag? Yes. Oh. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button, or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Keith, in Portland, Oregon, I was eliminated from the playoffs in my Keeper League this week. Scored my season low. Are there any moves I should make to make next year easier, a.k.a. pick up injured players like A.J. Green? Oh, my goodness. You're in a Keeper League and... AJ Green's out there? Yeah, you you should do that. I don't blame him. But look, sure, no, yes, I would pick you up, are the I shade would, thrower at AJ Green. I would absolutely pick up AJ Green in a keeper league, depending on how many I mean, it obviously depends on your situation, your keepers. But put it this way, I mean, we talked waivers, AJ Brown is out there. I would much rather, much rather in a keeper league pick up AJ Brown than I would AJ Green. And it has nothing to do with colors. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, this joke just keeps going. Can I trust AJ Wentz? Dom in Ottawa, Canada. Bonjour. Oh, Carson Wentz as well. What did I say? AJ Wentz. That's a new player. Yeah. Everybody's AJ. I don't think you can trust him because he's brand new. No, Carson Wentz. Sorry. Can I trust Carson Wentz against Washington in my semifinal game? Uh, would you consider uh, streaming in his place? If not. Uh, it's so tough because he's Tan, got look so- Tannehill for sure. Tannehill, one hundred percent. I would stream ahead of of Carson Wentz. Trust is a difficult thing to bestow upon a player targeting Greg Ward and JJ Arcega Whiteside, and uh, that's it. You yeah. know, it's, it's Zach Ertz and everybody else. So trust is hard to bestow. Maybe Nelson Aguilar is back out there, and that helps. But um, is, do you pick up Al- Aguilar? Yeah. I mean, we didn't bring him up in the waivers. He's injured and he sucks. But uh, the the reality is, if in the games that Aguilar has been the only wide receiver that's pretty yeah. much active, he's actually balled out. This is a great matchup. But what is interesting here, and this is – it's going to be so tough to trust Wentz. And if you start Wentz, don't watch the game. Don't do it to yourself. I started Wentz in you know our dynasty league Wentz, last night. Wentz and, and Winston, just don't watch it. It's just terrible to watch. But the Washington Redskins are most beatable at the tight end position. So this, you know, it's one of those things. If you're if Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz are your primary weapons, it's a pretty good matchup for that. So I think there are better streaming options like Tannehill. But if you can't grab one, then I think you're probably stuck with Wentz. All right, I want to bring this topic up because I saw amidst all of the Twitter reaction to Carson Wentz and various players, I saw. Uh, ESPN, Mike Clay, did you see his rant last night? I did not. Well, I... it's, it's, a, it's a rant very similar to the kind that Jason has made a couple of times this year, and it was basically the fact that, you know, had the most points scored in the league, mm. didn't get a bye, had the most points scored this week in the playoffs except for one player, so he got eliminated, and it was a bad beat vent, and it was basically he makes the statement, the bold statement, that – uh, we need to make all play the standard format, oh. uh, which uh, I do not agree no. with. I understand why he's saying it. Uh, he's saying it because his team was really good and it but didn't get what it deserved, so he, to speak. He still would have been out on all play, though, right? No, all play means you play every opponent. 
Right. I'm Every just week. Someone beat him this week. But doesn't No, all all, all play would be that, you know, you would go all play like so you wouldn't even have a playoff format. Uh, I don't know if he inferred the playoff format, but obviously during the regular season you play every every team every week, so your record is, you know, nine and three this week or uh, ten and two. I'm, I have no problem at all with the all play method. I just, it, the, I think it's an interesting take, an interesting uh, auxiliary type of league. But the head to head format for so, me, when it, when it comes down to it, is just it's that's so a, great. That's like the reason why. I would say a part of the reason why we care so much is because it's head to head. The highs are me, you, me, are you. euphoric. The lows are you are in the depths of hell. Like people forget that the extremes of emotion are why you do things in yeah, life. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. why you do things you enjoy. I because have, it actually matters. Your joy is extreme. I mean, I, I have I have had the wor in our league of record where I was out of the playoffs because of Philip Rivers' stupid interception, and I scored the, the most points this week. If I was in, um, I'm not going to open a <laughs> vote next year for any change in structure. I, you know, we've we've talked about that. I've kind of I've even toyed with it, and I and I realized that we've been in this league for I, I don't know 15 years, and it's amazing, and we love it, and we have fun. And bad beats are a part of the game. The highs are high, the lows are low. I the, fantasy football is immensely popular the way it is. Don't don't dumb it down. Yeah, but it, the lows are low, and that's why that they feeling are. is there because you. The he, here's the real truth, Jason. I hate to say this to you, but he's going to do it anyways. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to have to listen. He doesn't really hate it. No, your team was really good. I like where it's going. Okay. That's all. Oh, dude. You, so, put, I, you this, put a good team together. Yes, thank you. That's the truth. The truth is you put a good team together, and mm -hmm. you lost. Yeah. And that was that was b a bad beat. And it's made for great content on the show. You're welcome, everybody. And it's made for great content <laughs> in my life. Okay. Sort of. I There was part of me listening to you, because you needed like six points from Carson Wentz to win yesterday. There was part of me that hoped that Jason won every game he plays in fantasy in every league for the rest of his entire life just by, so you don't buy like a hundred points yes because I don't I don't know if I can take but even if that happens and we know that it's going to happen he will still whine and complain and yes, that's how he's going to uh, lose let, let me illustrate this <laughs> yesterday there was there was four minutes left in the third quarter he was ahead the other his opponent had Alshon so Alshon's gone for the game Jason's winning with four minutes left in the third quarter and he is moaning about possibly losing over the remaining 16 minutes of the game Carson Wentz, with a lead th this would is, have to like turn the ball over four times th no, for no, him no, to lose no, no, no. exactly at, at it's nothing point, like the Philip Rivers situation whatsoever at this Rivers point, had one drive left for an interception at this point in the game we're almost to the fourth quarter and he's barely scored six points he's fumbled twice already so yeah he could fumble again or throw an interception and then he, and and you have a winning. quarter, and you'd still no, be winning. I was up by like point two at that point. Oh, it drove me absolutely crazy. <laughs> so I hope you win every game by like, like your opponent never scores. I don't. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Me too. <laughs> we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. And Aaron Jones signed jersey yesterday on pristineauction.com. Went for $75.08. When you sign up over there, you can browse hundreds of daily auctions. You get uh, you get that victory nice and quick with the daily auction. Christmas coming up. Amazing, you know, really personal gifts for people. Their favorite player, autographed merchandise, footballs, cleats, all that stuff. Use the code BALLERS. Ballers. W when you sign up, you get $5 towards that auction victory. That'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check out BooklandGiveaway.com for that chance to win. And never forget... We made two Brashad Perryman water bets today. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.